Hello, I am Gregory the Poor Typist, and today we are entering the deep, dark world of typefaces, and this is Typewriter Club Live. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's good seeing everybody, and I'm going to be trying to finish my little blog article while we're talking, and then I have my Flickr uh, channel. I have a, a an album on Flickr that has oh. all my all of my typecasts that I've ever done. You know, and so all I have to do is pull that up and I can show all of these type samples. So th that's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> and right, I, very good. And very I guess good. hopefully I won't. Let's see if I can do this without disconnecting my camera. But I'm going to slowly pan over here and show you the new Hermes uh, 3000. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Pretty. <laughs> yeah. Pretty. <laughs> yes. So, okay. Okay. I told him he had the luck of uh, the, the typewriter club luck where... We all talk yeah. about Hermes 3000s, and then he gets one for a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just further proof, and this is what my blog article's about, it's further proof that there really is a cult of Hermes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, and hey, uh, John Maia, it's good to see you, by the way. Great to see you. And Brian. <laughs> yes. Oh, hello, Brian. And Dotto. Yes, and David. Hello. Anyways. <laughs> the the Brady bunch. <laughs> the Brady almost, bunch. almost. Almost. Oh yeah. Two we more. need a couple more. Oh, it yeah. looks like we might have more. All right. Let's add him. Bernardo. Bernardo. Hey, hey, welcome. Hey. Thank and, you. Uh, how are you guys? I, Pretty good. Very good. Welcome. Yeah, so how are you, Bernardo? Doing very well. Excellent, excellent. This now, week I went. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say I also have a, a new typewriter. I got oh, this. Very good. Are you gonna show it? Sure. Okay. I can show it right now if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's <clears throat> right here behind me. What is that? Wow. Oh, oh. Calibri. Yeah, wow. but it's branded as Optima. Oh, oh. nice! Yeah. Very nice. It's the first time, the first time I've seen one branded oh. as Optima. Keyboard that. that looks weird. Is that the Portuguese keyboard? Oh yeah, well, it know. is the Portuguese keyboard. Yeah, oh. yeah. Wow, I've never seen one of those. That is amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Which good? It's an eleven characters per inch. Mm -hmm. um, what, what uh, the lady that sold it to me uh, said it was about to go in the trash. What? Oh, and, oh no! Oh, yeah. the hurts the heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so My the, goodness. Uh, the the picture was was very bad on the advertisement, but I, I, uh. I thought there was something about it. I got a feeling that there was something about this typewriter. So. I, but I saw the, the Optima branding, and I, uh, I looked and looked, but I saw nothing that looked like it. And then I, then I, when I discovered that Optima was an East Germany company, I started looking and getting deeper, and I, I thought I, I discovered it was the Groma Calibri, the, the, later, yeah. the later model, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> what a find that was. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're talking typefaces here. So uh, I did uh, see here. I keep almost removing myself from the stream. We don't, <laughs> we don't want to do that. So I, I'm an old school and I, I, I printed it. I blew up some of my blog articles really big uh, so I can show you guys. So this is from my Royal Futura 800. Um, and actually from, uh, from Tim Monk's. Uh, post from April fourth, two thousand eleven. Uh, he had some uh, some of the different typefaces listed on that post, which was, was very helpful with this one. I think I deduced that this is uh, Royal Standard Elite. Hmm. And what I really like about this, this could be hard for you to pick it up, but uh, and first let me say. <laughs> Basically, all my typewriters essentially have the same typeface. Um, but I was excited that this one, the E, 
you'll notice it's kind of rolled back a little bit. So mm -hmm. it, 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 looks, it looks like the E is leaning back a little bit. Oh, yeah. I, I think that adds a little interest to it. So, yeah, so it makes it a little bit different. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't, the only uh, typewriters I have with different typefaces are electronic. So, mm. and, you know, we don't really count those because <laughs> that's kind of cheating. <laughs> and then the other one uh, is uh, my Singer Professional T62 from 1966, uh, which is essentially a Royal Safari. And on this one, um, I really, really like, uh, let's see, we have the, is it the, oh, I say <laughs> here, actually, the R, I, it has like wow. a little rounded part right there on the end, mm -hmm. and then also on the A, it has a similar one, and on the bottom of the the Y, so that just adds a little, a little something extra, you know, that I can, I can be excited about in Otherwise, having all the same typeface on my typewriters. <laughs> hey, hey, Gregory. Uh, yes. Question for you: The first one you showed, where the E is leaning back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, does the capital E also lean back, or does it look like it's straight up and down? Uh, I unfortunately I don't have because oh, okay. I, I zoomed way yeah. in on it, so I don't have a full. I'm just display. curious. I'm curious if it's a type bar misalignment or if it's actually the way the typeface was made it's way the typeface was yeah made. okay it's okay yeah, i've okay. seen those i don't know if i have one but i don't know i've seen that e before oh yeah okay i i love that when, the first time i saw it um i was like oh wow that's cool it's actually different <laughs> yeah okay. and then also it helps that it's elite so i you know i yeah. love my elite typefaces so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, does anybody else have any? Uh, oh, I see uh, Ted's already showing us something here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's uh, an echo. <laughs> Ted's gone recursive. I was just uh, looking up your your typeface. I think it's uh, Harold Pika. Is or Harold it? Elite. Oh yeah, you can see the E just barely. Mm -hmm. oh, no, wait. no, no, you can't. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, look. Oh, I'm just scrolling through. You don't have to focus on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but your site is so entertaining. Yeah, yeah. watching you surf the internet. <laughs> yeah, so uh, does anybody else have uh, typewriters with, with interesting typefaces, or do you have a preference for typeface? Um, I'll go ahead and start with uh, uh, Dotto. No, I'm probably pretty boring. Most of mine are just standard typeface. I, I do have one script uh, typeface, uh, SM9. It looks exactly like the one you have, and it's it's nice for a change. In fact, I, I pulled it out today um, to write a few letters with because I just felt like using the script uh, face uh, on it. But other than okay. that, they're, they're pretty pretty standard. Um, I, did, I did have a brother... Uh, excuse me, a Montgomery Ward, uh, I think it was a 510, of course, that's a brother machine, uh, with a script face at one point. And the script face was, well, first of all, it was elite. And second, it had some really interesting, um, a couple of the letters were really ornate, uh, and I ended up selling that one. But uh, that's really it. I'm pretty boring when it comes to that kind of stuff. Over. <laughs> Now, now, do you think it's it's at least partly because you have difficulty finding other ones, or you just don't really care to find other ones? I don't seek them out, other than an occasional script machine. Um, I I look uh, as you probably I'm pretty much a one trick pony anymore. I'm looking at Olympia SM9s uh, and maybe some sort of brother variant is pretty much kind of what I've fallen into the trap of that. Um, and with that, uh, the little um, Webster that I was tinkering with last week, I did discover, this is a little bit off topic, but I did discover that it is an 11 character per inch machine. Um, I took a ruler between that one and my Kmart machine, which looked pretty similar. Um, the, the Webster, the uh, platen, the rubber on the platen was about 24 centimeters, which is about nine and three eighths of an inch. And it had a 94 on the scale. When I look at the Kmart machine, 
the platen rubber is about 23 and a half centimeters or nine and a quarter inches, and it goes to 90, and it's a pica or a pica. So I've kind of solved my own mystery there. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with all that information, but it does go to show you that you can't always uh, look at a photograph at a glance and make a decision. You're going to have to dig a little deeper in some cases. And I never once considered that the Kmart machine and the um, Webster would have a different size platen. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that reminds me, th th this one is uh, 11 characters per inch as well. So, um, which, yeah, yeah. My yeah, my script ahead. machine, my script SM9 is 11 also. And I, that's oh, okay. one of the things I like about it. It, it. The fact that it's a script machine, if you want that, is good and, and it's useful. But I like the fact that it's 11 because you can pack just that much more on the line. So I do like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, how about you, Ryan? Um, yeah, I've, I've got a type piece. It's kind of odd. My... Uh... I was just taking a picture of it. Let's see if I can do this correctly. I think I've got a second camera. Uh, is that it? There's one. Um, let's see. Okay, sorry about that. It okay. looks like your doorbell camera. Yeah, <laughs> All right. There we go. Roaming cam. Let's see. Here, let me zoom in on you here. There we go. See that? It's just, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's just they're, they're little bitty characters and they're, they're stretched far apart. Oh, okay. Like, almost like it's an elite with pica spacing or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I see that. It's, it's kind of odd. Huh. Maybe roll, roll it up from the platen. Yeah. Let's see. Is that a uh, is that a brother variant or is it something else? No, that's a that's my Alder Tippa, Adler Tippa. That's interesting. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> that's just a little odd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's more trouble than it was worth. <laughs> Hello to Paul. Uh, he's there in the comments, and. Um, He's asking, isn't Olympia Elite number eight also 11 characters per inch? That I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I know somebody in this room probably will, will know, but yeah. I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, good. Uh, John Maye, how are you, sir? Very good, very good. Excellent. How are you? Uh, do you have a preference for typeface? Do you have difficulties finding typefaces? Uh, um, well, I, the machines, I actually did get a new one this week. Um, I've got, I believe, seven right now, and only two of them are elite. And actually, actually, no, three. I should lie. The, uh, the electronic Smith Corona. I go from... 10 to 12 characters per inch. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one that I just picked up is a uh, Brother Charger 22. Oh. And that's got 11 characters per inch. The other that's one that, the other one is the uh, Olympia Traveler Deluxe. But I don't know. I, I kind of like the, the 10 for now. Because, you know, it's, it's easy to, you know, you don't need glasses as, as often and let's see a little it comes out a little clearer yeah yeah um i did do a type sample of all of them i took a picture on the ipad here so to zoom in a little bit but um like you like they're all pretty well the same i don't know if that'll uh, there's a bit of reflection we can see it yeah so they're pretty well all the same i i find that if there's a difference, it's going to be in the in the numbers. Mm. So that's anyway. true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So anyway, that's my little <laughs> project that I did. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Um, Welcome, I, Bill. Okay. Hello, Bill. Good morning. How and are Indro. you? Looks like we got Indro again. Good. Yes, we have good. Indro back as well. <laughs> 
Yeah, so uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I hope you can understand. Well, I now. live in... Oh, I'm, I'm holding up the west side of Albert. Uh, Joe, hold up the east side. And uh, I've been collecting for a long time, but I'm only, I have a very small collection. I'm very interested in typography, so this is a very good uh, uh, opportunity. Okay. Your, your audio is cutting out just a little bit. Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll make do. But thank you so much for being here. Definitely. Well, you're welcome. Let me, uh, yeah, you, your audio is cutting out too. I got to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Huh. Does the cool. author me okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and Indra, I, I think I hope things are better for you as far as the technical difficulties. Uh, I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. No, no uh, delay this time. Yay! <laughs> oh, it was like four, four problems at this at one. Oh at no! One. <laughs> <laughs> but so, we got uh, you on. We got you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> All right. So uh, we were having issues last time. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, like I uh, started the uh, the first conversation, uh, let me say good morning to you all. It's good evening here. It's getting dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's about uh, getting dinner time. Uh, I'm sitting in my uh, work room. Uh, I got a couple of my radios in the back here. I don't know if you can see them. Let me it's make it short bigger. wave. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Oh. Mm. Wow. So, wow. My goodness. I <laughs> uh, got a bunch of them. Uh, there's a lot. And uh, there's more over there. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, so I got a, a little typewriter over here, which is uh, in parts. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. If I there we go. Like yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a a, a bakelite of bakelite, as we say. It's an Olympia Plana. Yep. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> one. And uh, it's I got it. Well, it's it's mostly a part. And uh, there's some problems with it, um, hard to fix, but, and there's some broken parts as well because it's Bakelite. It has some, some parts, some chips out here, like in the front. Oh. Um, you, can't, you can't fix those, you can't repair it, but maybe it, I'll get it to work. So um, yeah, I'm here. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, do, do you have a preference for typefaces? Do you have any luck finding different typefaces? Um, uh, the typefaces don't bother me that much. Uh, okay. I, I prefer the uh, I prefer the uh, the small portables, uh, the little ones, the the smallest as I can get. Uh, I'd like to take them with me uh, on holidays, and uh, uh, sometimes I use them even in the train. Um, I got some big machines. I got a Triumph over here. I got the uh, old Underwoods. Um, they're a bit hard to work on on daily basis or whatever. I like the small portables. So you can you can bring them, you can take them, and uh, you can do a quick type on it, and that's fine. Nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Bill, I forgot to ask you uh, if you have a, a preference for typefaces. Uh, if you have any luck finding different typefaces. Oh, I think you're muted. There you go. Well, I'm on, right now I'm on a Hammond kick, so I'm looking at, looking at different shuttles. Um, and then I recently uh, got my Hammond folding uh, working. Reliably. So I've got a nice script, and then I've got a all caps shuttle that I'm that I'm that I like very much. If I if I have the time, I can go get a sample and, and show it. Yeah, uh, definitely. And then I definitely. got a, and then I got a, I'm, I have a Greek type shuttle coming uh, shortly. So maybe we, I'll be able to show that at the next uh, meeting. Yeah, definitely. Fun. Um, yeah, the, the hand else? had. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Mm. Go oh, ahead. I'm sorry. The, 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 the hand shuttle scheme just put out anything, any language you could have. Um, very much like the IBM Selectric, and um, uh, so they had a shuttle for astrological symbols. They had oh wow! Four or five different sh shuttles for uh, uh, math symbols and, and all kinds of other things. So it's um, 
Uh, that's that's fun being finally being able to use my Hammond. A type okay. shuttle is a the a type shuttle is a um, is a it looks like a crescent and crescent old lines of uh, pipe uh, molded into a um, uh, uh, kind of what what may say like a sector of a of a circle. And um, then the the shuttle gets put into the circular uh, holder, the type holder of the of the Hammond. As the Hammond works, you press the key, and the mechanism rotates the uh, shuttle holder to the right key, and then the hammer strikes in the back. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, early twentieth century contraption. Wow. <laughs> But it works. <laughs> it, but it works. Sounds complicated. <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you for that. Uh, does anybody else have uh, any typefaces they prefer? Uh, have any luck finding different typefaces? Oh, I well. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh. You sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was looking at mine. I prepared the I prepared the sheet, but I was blowing blowing them up at, on the copier right now. I think my Adler Gabriel twenty five is close to the the one that Brian was showing. Okay. Yeah, I really like it. It's a little different. The characters are a little different than mm -hmm. the regulars. Yeah. Very good. I found that they're a little shorter. In height, the spacing is the same. But I find them a little shorter in height. That makes it look more elegant, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. So I have four pikas, and then I have three elites. Okay. I have, yeah, I have the Olympia Traveler Deluxe as an elite. My Adler nice. Tipa S is the cubic senatorial, I think. Oh, no. oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, so that's the, the, <laughs> I love I, that. I've yet, to, I've yet oh. to find a script one, but the Groma, yeah. the Groma Calibri looks like this. So, um, Very nice. One. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like the script one, but I've yet to find one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did. I do like the Adler. The Adler one. I think it's my favorite. Okay. I thought I was. I thought I was gonna enjoy the, the cubic one, but I, I do prefer more. I do prefer them with the. Seraphs. I think the Adler looks looks better. Yeah, the serifs. Thank you. Yeah, serifs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I, go ahead, Ted. Yeah. Oh, go okay. Ahead. Um. Well, I don't know that I prefer any particular typeface because I tend to collect in in a way that makes sure I have lots of different typefaces. I have uh, um, generally the machines I've kept are the ones that have the interesting typefaces. So I have I have everything from cubic to script to uh, the Underwood se uh, slab serif to uh, various elites and picas and and then I've got the composer, which of course has, you know, 160 different typefaces. Well, fonts actually, because they are proportionally spaced oh, wow. uh, on type balls like IBM. So um, it's I, I don't have a, a a dearth of typefaces to choose from. I get the I get a lot of variety, and I don't tend to. Uh, prefer any of them really? I, okay. I, just, I, I because I I generally post on on my uh, typecast blog. Um, I like having all those different typefaces. So every post I make, you know, in a given year, even can be a lot of different typefaces for people to enjoy, and you know, for me to enjoy because I can, you know, pull out a new machine. I have a different typeface. Okay. So my my point of view is I just don't have a preference really. I I like having a lot of variety. Yeah. Now my question to you is how in the world do you find them? Because 
every time I get a typewriter, it's essentially the same typeface. So is there a particular way to find different typefaces? Uh, the way the the most efficient way I've found is to buy lots and lots of typewriters and then keep the ones that have the interesting typefaces. <laughs> that could get expensive. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I get them from thrift stores, so a lot uh, yeah. of times I can take it and look at it and and that's true. Try it out and see what it's got. And uh, okay. I'll, I'll usually get it even if it doesn't have an interesting typeface. Yeah, you know, I can always give it away at a at a type in. Exactly. But, uh, the ones I keep are the ones with the interesting typefaces and experiences. Yeah. Well, yeah. What did you see online? Um, you know, you can find, sometimes you can find script typefaces. Even if you can't see the, the slugs, you can tell the script typeface because um, it won't have a, a red in the color selector on the ribbon. Uh, it also may not have a, um, well, also may have a number one when it shouldn't have one. Um, what's it? I think. Those are, those are both pretty good ones. Yeah, it's not a hard and fast rule, but that's a, yeah. that's a good way to tell. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, like a six-pitch machine won't have right, that's uh, true. bichrome. That's true. Um, so it, there's ways you can guess, but it, it's this, there's no way of telling unless you actually see the typeface. Yeah. 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 But if, if you're guessing and it's cheap, like if it's a, it's a, it's a ratty machine, but you, you see, well, maybe it's script. Then mm -hmm. you can uh, identify it that way. Plus, the the one and the uh, and the color selector get you even closer because um, you you don't want to use the the loopy L for your number one. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why they put a separate number one in there. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably none of these rules are hard and fast. My yeah. my my issue here uh, with thrift stores is it's very rare for them to even have a typewriter. Mm -hmm. And when they do, it's almost always an electronic one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it's, it's very rare. So that lowers my odds tremendously. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, David, how about you? Sir? Well, I like, um, my Hermes, I think has a Senate and I'll try to get this. Oh yeah, and but the top is an Optima, which is a little bit smaller and it's not quite aligned mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but I like the I like the way that both of these look. Mm -hmm. So those are the two that I I kind of go for. Nice. Um, I'd love to have a Gothic. Uh, oh yeah. Face. I yeah. Uh, I think Ted Monk has one. Yeah. Sure, he does. <laughs> yeah, showed it to you last time. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but this is a a good question because I don't know if a lot of you uh, got uh, the update from Richard Polt uh, over the weekend about the next book. Uh, yes. Ed Keys. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a question that we have to ask ourselves: What are we going to use to submit our stories? Right, because mm -hmm. the look of the typeface is just as important. Joe spent, I don't know how many videos talking about this when for the first one, the uh, cold hard type, and it's hard. So, uh, yeah, I def definitely recommend everybody check out Joe's videos on selecting and getting preparing yourself. This is going to be your first time submitting to cold hard type, but. I'm happy that it's not, it doesn't have to be based on a typewriter because I don't want to write about typewriters again. I want to write about something <laughs> else. So I'm just going to shoehorn something in um, somewhere. I, I think I've already got a story ready. But yeah, if you guys need the link, um, I can send it to uh, Greg and then just follow that over there and it gives you the instructions. Very good. Yeah. Now, my, my thought on, on that one is I would want to use probably my, my dirtiest type slugs. <laughs> Get kind of a rough look, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what we need is, is, is type slugs like the, uh, like the, the different letters out of uh, catalogs and magazines. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> he is taking the, uh, the, like the photographs the and art, so uh, if those are also being submitted. Um, and if Ted Monk doesn't use his gothic typewriter as a submission, <laughs> I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. 
or <laughs> if Bill has some of those old uh, Hammond machines, you know, yeah, those would be great. It'd be a pain, but that'd be nice. Yeah, definitely. I think Joey, I think you're muted. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the old typefaces from like. I guess the oldest machine I have is a Underwood portable from 1930. And I'm, I don't really have, uh, I'm trying to look for an example of it, but those old typefaces like pre-World War II, there's something about the shape of some of the, like the descenders on the Y, there's a little curliness to it that give it a special, you know, pre-World War II appearance. And I think that would be kind of neat for a, a horror themed uh, piece right to write on something an old typeface right uh so yeah <laughs> that would be cool yeah or or maybe a poorly aligned type there you like, go there you like, go uh, like one of those ones that uh yeah the corsairs yeah know, the, the letters all over the place <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you have to make it readable, though, you know, for the purposes of a, of publication. But I hope you guys don't mind oh, eating no, breakfast we here. Alone. We have mm -hmm. we have eggs and bacon. Yummy. Here, that. <laughs> uh -huh. Now I'm <laughs> hungry. Yeah, <laughs> we're hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, does anybody else have anything about the the typefaces? Uh, well, I guess I'll go ahead and mention that I have a the second focus on this. This is the Hermes three thousand, and this is a thirteen character per inch typeface. Oh, so this is actually the blog article I just put up. Um, but I have a lot of stuff on my Flickr page, and I haven't really gone through it very well, but. I'll, I'll have to switch to it here in a little bit later, unless you want to switch to it now. If you want to switch to my desktop, uh, can you do that, Gregory? Uh, I should be. Let's see. You just have to share your screen. I don't know how easy that is to do. You should be able to use the share screen button in StreamYard. Mm. See if that works. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay, let me go back to share screen. Or is that something Gregory has to do? I don't know. If... Uh, I see it down on the bottom of the StreamYard page. You do it, and then I, I add it to the stream. <laughs> okay, let me see. Share screen. There you go. Okay. There you uh, go. All right. Okay. Mm, it's not showing up on my end. Is it? Okay. Oh, my entire screen. Share. Okay. Now there it is. Now, now it should be oh, there. Okay. All right. So can you guys see my this <laughs> this basic layout of of uh, all of these typefaces? Um, let me see if I go back to this one. This one, I'm trying to decide what. So most of these I usually labeled. Um, this I think is the. Uh, uh, my Smith Corona Silent Super, I believe. So that's a Pika. Or I'm an elite typeface. But uh, I'm just going to see here. I know this is rather unorganized. I apologize. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So how about this? There is some detailed typing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, an attempt to do the double... Um, sort of the, the bolding of of characters where you can hold yes. down the space bar, right? And I think this was, um, I don't know what this was. Let's see. I think it was my um, Royal Mercury, maybe. Either that or the, uh, I don't know, one of the two. So let's see here. Let's see if I can find something else. So, yeah, this is the... Uh, this is the day that I was with James Copeland up in the mountains on a picnic. And what was this? Sorry, I'm trying to read this. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the Groma Calibri, actually. That was the Groma Calibri. So uh, if, you, if you see that right there, 
the Groma Calibri mine does that effect pretty well. Ah. Um, oh, lucky mine does. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. There you go. Ah, uh, yeah. Only one of my machines does that effect. It's Nakajima All 3000. Ah, uh, yes. My first typewriter, actually. Ah. Yeah. I always try to, to, to do the effect, but only that machine does it reliably. Uh. This is the uh, torpedo. I see if I can uh, scroll here. And it's a pretty standard typeface. Nothing special. But... Uh, Okay, let's see if I can go back to my album here. I hear some dogs barking. It's very cool. <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, so this <laughs> is uh, this is a thermal typewriter. And which one is this? Uh, no, no, no. I think this is the EP forty three, if I'm not mistaken. So it has kind of a cubic typeface. That's actually two different cubic typefaces. So, we shouldn't forget the thermal typewriters. They are also pretty good for having several different typefaces. Yes, indeed. Except for the Canon Type Star Six. Which oh yeah, you have to have the the font cartridge, which right. is impossible to find. Impossible to find. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'll let you guys get back to it. I I have a whole page after page of all this stuff and very good. <laughs> um, but not very well organized by typewriter type, but random good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Okay. I'm done. So Ooh. I just got a message email from Richard Polt. He said he was uh, peeking in for a little bit. Oh, oh great. Hello, um, Richard. But he couldn't find, he Hi, couldn't find the, uh, he couldn't find the chat uh, link. But he says he's not sure he wants to be seen on <laughs> any <Anyways>. way. Oh. <laughs> but uh, one of these, I've invited him a couple of times. I think one of these days we'll get him, hopefully. Come on. Yeah. Maybe he just doesn't <laughs> like us. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, he was in uh, California Typewriter, so we we know what he looks like. We know yeah. what he looks like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean the the bar is pretty low. This looks like a rogues gallery from the U.S. <laughs> Post Office. Wall. I mean, yeah. it doesn't take much to uh, you know. That's right. There now I have points on my beard. I look evil. Oh. <laughs> well, Greg, <clears throat> Greg, I um I partially disassembled my Hammond so I can show people what oh, the, okay. the shuttle looks like. Is that okay? yeah, definitely. All right, so, uh, where am I? That's a type. That's a type shuttle from a uh, from a Hammond. Okay. Okay. All right. And this is an upper lowercase. Um, I think it's a Gothic. But this shuttle uh, fits into a drum, and then it um, we get and then it turns depending mm -hmm. on what character you want to type. And then the top row is letters. I mean, the top row is caps, the middle row is um, lowercase, and the bottom row are numbers and symbols. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Anyway, let me show you how it goes. Yeah. Oh, first of all, first of all let me show you. Uh, <clears throat> so that's Maybe a sample it was an early the, inspiration. That's a sample of the... Ooh. Oh, that particular shuttle. I like that. Yeah. Gotcha. So, it's, so it's upper and lower case. All right. Nice. All right. So let me let me show how to how to install this thing. There's Oh nice. There's the machine. Let me let me prop this up with some books. Oh wait. <laughs> So you lift this drum. Okay, there's another shuttle on here already. Okay, that's that's a script uh, type of base. And then the, the other shuttle goes in over here. Okay, let me put it in. So you can have more than one shuttle in a machine? 
Yes. All right, so we'll lift it up and see that's see that big space there. Yeah. See the shell, the shell, so you this goes in like this. Like that. And then you move it around. And the shuttle go the, the shuttle rotates depending on what character you want to what so I'm going to set this thing here then I'm going to line the thing up like I said this is a contraption what year was this typewriter made Bill Do you know uh, 26 wow huh. okay so it drops down in there And they had, like I said, they had um, dozens of different typefaces. Let me put some paper in it. You had to load it in from the front. And strip back up. And then the paper curled. The paper curled inside a little basket. See? See the see the paper curling up in the little basket there? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. All right, so let me straighten the paper up. All right. So, when you hit when you hit a key, you can lift this up a little bit so we can look down into it. So when you type a key, the the drum rotates. We get one over way over on the side here. The shuttle. The shuttle moves, not the not the drum. The shuttle, the shuttle oh, okay. Moves, so everything is indexed. There you go. You can see the shuttle move there. Hmm. See the this, this, see this little prong here. That's moving the shuttle. So, oh uh, yeah. <clears throat> Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see if it's working. Well, today it's, it's being a little finicky. Let's see. Do I have the, maybe I have the, oh, I have the pressure strip on the wrong side. Sorry, folks. Here. You don't want to see me fuss around with it. Let me turn that off. <laughs> uh, you know what's crazy is you, you think about the history of what has been written on something that was made in 1926. Exactly. So like the, the stock market crash, right? 1929, uh, World War II, um, just... And it's still going to this day. And that really says something about typewriters in general. You know, yeah. everything we have now, you just get a new one. Yeah, <laughs> This one's going to be 100 years old, and it still works today. That is crazy. It is. Yeah, I mean, but just, and it's it's been, I mean, it's been telling the stories of history. You know, it's, that's these things, that's, that's why I like them when they're beat up. Yeah, I exactly. Like when they can use, uh, I like it just like I, I like I said, like a rock star's guitar. You can tell that it's got some miles on it, and I like to imagine 
you know, what people said with it or, you know, what they were doing back in the day, you know. Uh, my friend Larry Schultz, who was the typewriter repairman, he would tell me stories about college, the college rush to get typewriters cleaned and serviced prior to kids going back to school. And the interesting things that he would find inside of the typewriters, like uh, he found a joint once. Uh, of course. <laughs> you know, but that was a big part of the history at that time, right? Is you're going back to school, you have to have your typewriter serviced and repaired. And now that just seems crazy, you know, that yeah, that's how important they were. You know? Exactly. Also, only users lose That's drugs. Right. <laughs> you heard it from the reverend. <laughs> <clears throat> now, while, uh, oh, I think he's back. All right. All right, after that interlude. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Just a little bit. All right, so again, paper has to be, this is an impression strip, it's just a piece of rubber. That goes between the, there's a hammer that hits from behind, goes through, hits the impression strip, which is a piece of, piece of rubber here, stretched from here to here. And then there's the paper, and then there's a ribbon guard that basically functions as a vibrator, but it has a little hole in it so that it only, oh, the hammer only strikes through that hole, and then it hits the typeface. So again, and we'll do a cap. And there you have it. Huh. Let me go a little closer. And there's the type. I just typed. Yeah, Can is that quieter than the uh, typewriters that we're used to? I'm sorry? I, is it any quieter or louder than other typewriters? I think it was quieter. Uh, uh, of course, the, it was all about, con in, the, in, the, in those days, it was all about controlling noise. Mm. This was a, uh, this is a full multiplex, which, is, which was Hammond's desperate attempt at, um, capturing some of the portable market that was coming out in those in those days. So I'll, I'll try to fold it up one handed here. Hold on. So these little buttons on each side, you push it. Oh, well. <laughs> huh. And it all folds wow. up in a nice, neat little, oh. neat little package. <laughs> and then <clears throat> Ah. So, uh, so Hammond, uh, and you had a, the owner of Hammond was a very, uh, was a very, very unusual guy. He, uh, uh, he, the, his story is described very, very well in, in Peter Wiles on, um, on the typewriters, which I, I think is one of the be most beautiful books on typewriters, certainly. I think it's, uh, but there's a wonderful article about him in it and all the different models that they made. This was the last one that they, that they brought out just before Hammond uh, died. Uh, it was not terribly successful. Um, and the, the tech shuttle um, design been acquired by um, uh, Veritiper, and uh, that was used, well, I knew guys that were using, uh, I knew typesetters that were using the Veritiper well into the 90s, 1990s, uh, but it was the same uh, shuttle mechanism, and they were able to create a proportional space. In fact, uh, Hammond had a proportional space well before anybody anybody else did and you can see how easy it was to change the the typefaces um, if the operator had his uh, act together uh, 
it would have been a lot faster, but uh, I'm I'm still functioning. I'm just one cup of coffee. <laughs> so that's that's uh, um, that's it. And then uh, if you look up uh, the Hammond Multiplex uh, on the manual website under uh, Javier or Xavier dot edu, you can look at a Hammond Multiplex manual and you can see all the different type. Shuttles that, that were available for it. It's quite a, quite a machine. And how many do you have? Of the I just bases? have the one. I just have the one Hammond. Mm-hmm. It's taken me about nine months to get it working reliably. Oh, the way okay. You saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I had to. I have. I have one other uh, folding multiplex that's some, just for parts. Oh, okay. Okay. How many of the typefaces do you have, though? Uh, let's see, two, four, six. Yeah. Okay. Six. Excellent. I have script. I've got script, italic. I've got a sort of a con- what they called common, which was sort of a what we would call prestige. Um, Greek, and then the upper the upper and lower case that you saw. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Excellent. That, that's fascinating, but those really old typewriters make me nervous. <laughs> oh, man. Right. <laughs> Are you showing us there something, Ted? Uh, yes, I'm showing you a 1915 Hammond type style catalog. Ooh. Ah, wonderful. So you oh, can there you go. An idea of some of the... Oh, they even did Braille. Braille. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So we yeah, got... Bulgarian... Uh, yeah, you got Even all the different English. languages. Here's your vertical script that Underwood people like a lot. Uh, let's see. was also available on the Hammond. Let's see. Esperanto? Uh, there, I don't know that Esperanto was around in 1915, but yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, I was wrong. Yeah, I, I saw a reverse slant in there someplace. Let's Where's see. It? They had Polish. They had a Polish. Yep, with a... There you go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, wow. I don't see that every day. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of things you don't see every day here. Like this really curly <laughs> German oh, yeah. new orthography shuttle. Thanks. You can... Uh... Fractor. There's the Greek. <laughs> yep. Ted, did you ever use a uh, Veritiper when you were in the printing business? I did not. We had... Uh... At that point, we had just gotten a laser printer and a Macintosh. And so before that, we were buying all of our uh, typesetting from a typesetting house, uh, which Mm. they used an optical typesetting machine that was photographic in nature. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Ted, I I did want to ask you about uh, a couple blog posts ago. You you had the the rather howering uh, uh, description of uh, building the the type slugs. Uh, doing what with the type slugs? I I, I think wel- welding them on or oh uh, yeah soldering. I was, so- soldering sorry soldering. I, I was soldering off the uh, instructions for a uh, let's see let me pull that up. <coughs> Uh, I, I was reading through it, and it was quite frightening. <laughs> oh, I don't know that it's frightening. Well, it, it's, um, it's talked about, you know, you have to watch out for this invisible flame. and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, Using a torch. You're talking yeah. about the, uh, the S221 typeface guide. Yes. Uh, I found the instructions for that in a manual, and uh, I, I remember... Seeing these a lot in in uh, typewriter shops, and a lot of times the 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 owners of the typewriter shops don't remember what it's for. Uh, it just looks kind of like a weird uh, torture contraption, but it's actually <laughs> it's it's for soldering type. You can do it's a universal guide, so you can do portables and standards. Wow. Uh, and it was, and I found the instructions to use it, and so I thought I'd put it up there. Yeah, uh, I don't think many people either remember or have the instructions for using it. Thank you, Ted. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, oops, there I go. Screen <laughs> again. 
So that's the kind of tool that it would be nice to see someone recreate in, you know, in metal. Like, uh, a lot uh, of people still have them. Um, yeah. Is the problem is that people have them and don't know what they are. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, uh, uh, professional mechanics these days will will hand solder it. They'll leave the type bar right on the machine, right, and solder it right there in the machine uh, without using a gauge at all. They just kind of eyeball it because they've been doing it for a while. Yeah. So uh, the, a lot of times the, these tools are a little more complex than they probably needed to be, but and that's why they get they fall out of use and people forget what they are and forget how to use them. Uh, what are you good. showing us here, David? That's uh, Richard Molman's <coughs> hand. Okay. Oh, hold on. Is that yeah. a Hammond 12? I don't I don't know. Let's see if we can get uh, remember now what would happen is that uh, that cell that white celluloid uh, uh, strip there is where uh -huh. you would mount a cardboard uh, keyboard okay. diagram for the different typefaces. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're type if you're typing oh. Greek or Cyrillic or 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 something, that's where you would put the typewriter. I mean the type uh, type layout card. Each typeface came with a a card that would show you what what the keys were. Oh, wow, that's cool. There's a prong. There was a prong. There's a prong on the left hand side. There was another prong on the right hand side. Is missing on this unit, uh, and mm -hmm. that's where you insert the, the piece of cardboard. Okay. okay. Wow. And the same is true on the folding multiplex that, that I have. There's a little there's a there's a platform for that I yeah richard dog Parker, drinking. Stuff, definitely so <laughs> but luckily i think we've collected enough portables that i don't have to compete uh, <laughs> we're in the same kind of area and I'll, I'll go 100 miles to get a typewriter if it's worth it um, but I, I don't do online at all. But it's different in the Midwest, you know. It, the close, like I say, the closer you get to Milwaukee, the, the better luck you're going to have getting typewriters. Wisconsin, anybody who's looking for typewriters, go to Wisconsin. You'll find there's, there's a ton. There. Well, I'd go, I'd go, <laughs> I'd go, um, I'd go 500 miles for a weird shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t generally, if you get a machine that takes a lot of different uh, typefaces on elements or shuttles, you get this strong compulsion to go out and find them all. And uh, that's why I have 130 type balls for that composer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so true. To <clears throat> that's so true, Ted. Mm -hmm. uh, Hammond, even, of course, Hammond would make one up special for you if uh, yep. if you had some special desire. Uh, they even had one with astrological symbols, and they mm -hmm. didn't make very many of them. The, the, an astrological symbol shuttle, which is very weird. Um, they might make ten of them. Yeah, so they're extremely rare right now. And yeah. and the when they when they sold those, would they expect you to change it out in the middle of your document so that you could type certain symbols and then go back to typing text? Yes. Ah. They marketed it. They marketed the typewriter as a as a basically a universal machine. It could be used anywhere in the world. They even made machines that would go instead of from left to right, they would go from right to left. Oh wow! Uh, so the, the 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 spring mechanism could be reversed. Uh, uh, yeah, so the, the the same as the Blick, uh, the idea was that it would could, could be used anywhere in the world. It would be very useful for mathematic texts, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those Greek letters are, yeah. In wow. fact, their logo, their logo, if I can, here, if I can show it, if I can show it to you can, can anyone see that logo am i 
Yep. Yeah, there you go. The logo is a map of the world. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. idea oh, it, yeah. says, if in, it says, for all nations and tongues, for all nations and tongues. Ah. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, the catalog page I have up here is uh, showing some of the types for the reversible multiplex. And, uh, you know, for $3, you can get your Arabic, Arabic, Persian, um, Yiddish, Yiddish, Armenian, uh, Irish, Gaelic. Uh, and what would happen is you would order one and they would make it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, they, didn't, the, they, didn't have these necess they didn't have these in stock. You 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 um, sent them. Oh, and then go go back a little bit, Ted. One more page. Yeah, those. No, no, go up a little bit to that next to the next page. No, no, down. Oh, okay, down. <laughs> uh, there you go. Those are called uh, shuttle shields. And that okay. Was, that's that's what raises and lowers the ribbon, very much like a vibrator mm -hmm. does. And then at the bottom. Or at the right hand side is, a, is an impression strip. Yep. The all important impression strip. Without that, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, down here is that uh, picture of that keyboard layout. Oh, thing yeah. Yeah. That you yeah. clip on. So, uh, nice. see, I think that's all I have on here. So, yeah. Hammond was a very I don't know. interesting machine. I don't know how. Uh, I don't, I don't look at the list of typewriter supplies. They even had pencil sharpeners and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of other things. But, uh, uh, yeah, every language, every the library, the laboratory, everything. And I don't know how many of those um, type shuttles were actually used. Uh, but um, yeah, there you go. Go a little bit further to the right. Pen. There you go. There, you'll say. Yeah, it says on the outer, on the left and the right of that oval, it says for all nations and tongues. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, David G is is saying that since it holds two shuttles, you don't need to swap that swap out uh, mid document, right? Right. Okay. Right. But it was, as you can see, even I can could swap out a a, a shuttle. <laughs> that's true now it's interesting that so early on in the history of typewriters they had that feature to be able to swap them out and then for many many years they got rid of that feature and then finally i guess with the daisy wheels they brought it back right i uh, i think very much like singer uh sewing machine company they're um there were some manufacturers that ins uh, insisted that everybody, uh, every person on the planet should have a typewriter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. Singer was far more successful than that. Singer had salespeople in literally every country in the world, even in Central Asia. They had uh, salespeople uh, uh, riding around in horses and camels. And ox carts and things like that, selling Singer sewing machines. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Excellent. There's a picture. There's a famous picture. Um. Uh, I think it's in the book "The Writing Machine" by Michael Adler, of uh, somebody using a lick on a camel. Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, uh, David is asking what came first, the daisy wheel or the selectric? Oh, and I'm guessing it's electric. Yeah, uh, Technically, the daisy wheel, because that's really? index typewriters. Wow. Oh, index okay. typewriters had daisy wheels. Huh. Oh. Very good. Oh. Yes. Oh, Very yeah. interesting. I was going to show here... Um, I wish I had a more complete reference. All I have is the uh, the signatures for uh, union type. Uh, on the type bar, when you look at the typeface, uh, in the middle, there's like a little symbol. It's usually like a little encoded symbol. Um, yeah. The, yeah. That will tell you exactly what kind of typeface 
it is. Oh, uh, depending on the maker. Oh, but oh. Uh, I have I have a reference here for a bunch of union type uh, references to show you. They have the little symbol which tells you that this is GT fifty oh, exclusive I was, elite. Oh, I was told somebody had a had a. This is like stamp collecting. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have a. I only have one for uh, Grusik, um or however you pronounce that in German. That sounded um, good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Remington had their own stamps that they would put on the the type. Well, Union would put them on for the for the typefaces that they sold to Remington. Um, there's Underwoods, Royals, uh, Smith Coronas. So all the, the typefaces that Union in Germany made for, for these different makers, they uh, would stamp them with their own little, oh, look, there's the Hebrew one. You get the oh. little menorah. Huh. So you know what's interesting about that German-made typefaces is that's how Gutenberg got into uh, making the, the uh, movable type printing presses that his family mm -hmm. were engravers. And it was the history of the typewriter or the uh, printing press goes back to the history of the engraving, which was really strong uh, in. There were uh, guilds, uh, engraving guilds in Germany mm -hmm. back in the 15th century. And it looks like they still, in the 20th century, still oh, have that much, kind yeah. of skill set. Hmm. I don't think I have any more marks here. Just different type That's based an style. amazing. That's a fantastic document. Yeah. Really uh, great. If you guys want these documents, they are all available in the uh, typewriter database download area for uh, typewriter hunter level members. So if you want to get it them. There in, the lower, in the lower right, it says British sector. So clearly yep. this was made uh, in, the, in the, say, five years after the, uh, the war. This was uh, 1957. Mm. The year I was born. Wow. Cool. <laughs> the British sector. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Until when would they have uh, ended? When did, what, what, when did they yeah, end the long, yeah. British occupation? Or no, no, no. Um, they, 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 the production of these. Uh, oh, they, the type plugs? I have. Uh, Basically, these companies, there was there were three companies that merged into two companies. It was um, uh, Ransmeyer Rodrian and uh, Union Drusiki, or Drusik, however you pronounce that. Uh, and they were both in Germany. And uh, they ran from about, ooh, looks like at least the 1920s all the way up to 1980, I have... Uh, uh, a typeface catalog here for Raro type, which would have been Rodri and Ransmeyer in 1980. Hmm. Let me pull that up. So you can see that they offered uh, kind of the same. This is a 1980 catalog, and it looks basically not quite the same as the other one, but uh, it does have uh, mostly the same typefaces. Hmm. Let's see if I can scroll down to an actual typeface instead of just these listings. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> so yeah, these are these are all the typefaces that they offered, and they made typefaces for all the different typewriter companies, uh, as well as the companies would make their own typefaces. It was uh, kind of a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Hmm. And uh, so I don't think we have slug marks on this one. Uh, does not say. And the, those slug marks, did they appear between the, the upper and lower case? Or do they, they do. Yep. They're, okay. They're just they in do. between. Because usually what I see on mine is like, it looks like a little plus symbol. Mm -hmm. That was, that would probably mean that that was a, uh, made it with the, at the typewriter factory itself. They had their own type foundries. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Let's see. Is there any other typefaces you want to see? Sure. I have, <laughs> I have IBM type guides. I have uh, Adler. 
I have more raro ones. I have actually the composer guide. I can show you all the if, typefaces that the composer the, had. Yeah, let's look at that. Let's see. This is the one that I got with my composer. There's a the beast of the machine you can see. <laughs> but you had uh, different point sizes and uh, font weights of various uh, typefaces. This is Aldine Roman, which is kind of an old style uh, Times Roman um, that dates all the way back to the like I think the 1600s. Uh, Can you enlarge uh, that one of those, please? Oh sure. Uh, let's see. Make it big. They're really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does the composer have the ability to to uh, stretch or widen a typeface without changing the, the thing? Not the typeface itself. I can uh, change the leading and the uh, the the kerning. Kerning. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. it's 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 actually a type type. Uh, Typesetting machine. It's a cold typesetting machine. Gotcha. Kind of exactly like the the uh, the newer versions of the Hammond, the Veritypers. Mm -hmm. They're also cold typesetting machines. They would uh, basically print through a carbon ribbon on paper to make the uh, the type instead of uh, they call that cold typesetting because hot typesetting is is casting it in lead. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So let's see. We have all these different Ted, Bedonis. Ted. Oh, beautiful. Wow. I have most of these typefaces. Wow. Century. It's a nice teeny tiny six point century. So do you think Baskerville should be used during Halloween? Oh, <laughs> uh, it could be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Baskervilles. <laughs> the um, hound, the hound of the Baskerville. Yeah, <laughs> now, Ted. Were these were these on a Daisy wheel? These are on a uh, uh, element like a uh, IBM Selectric. Ah, uh, so like let me show. And, Yeah, right there. Do you, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, but they're not Selectric. A, um, they they will fit a Selectric a... too, but they don't type. They're not the same okay. coding. Okay. Mm. Do you have a Veritiper type? Catalog? Uh, I have a Hammond type catalog, and I think I've got a Veritiper one. Uh, not right here. I think it's in my incoming file, so I don't have it on this computer. Mm -hmm. But I do. Um, let's see. Do I have it on the website? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> uh, let's see. Typographical. Nope. I have to log in again. These wonderful scenes of me look of me <laughs> typing on a completely different computer. <laughs> Let's see. Typographical. Watching Ted surf the internet. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. I do really wish that there was just a universal book. Or maybe even a series of books or a group of books that had like all the typefaces and their names. Uh, it, it'd be wonderful to it just look at a typeface, look it up real quick, and know what exactly it was called. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, the, the thing is, you'd have the same typeface being called 20 different things depending yeah. on which right. manufacturer yeah. was using it. And, and there's a whole. Um, Area of study, like scholarly study of typefaces, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, uh, typography in general, and it's just it's rabbit hole you didn't even know was there. There's so much stuff to know about that. That's There's true. Tons of books of that kind of stuff for illustrators and people in graphic design, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, there's some uh, also some police studies in that uh, file area on typewriter database about. Uh, Landmarks and typewriting ad identification, oh, yeah. and class characteristics of foreign typewriters and typefaces. A lot of different studies in there, as well as the uh, the typeface catalogs themselves. So if you're not a typewriter hunter, you should be one. I know, huh? <laughs> Lots of free resources. There you go. I know what I'm doing after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not a member yet? 
Uh, unbelievably no. Um, I'm gonna have to look you up. <laughs> <laughs> I've opened my account yesterday, but I still yet to apply for the type typewriter hunter. Bernardo, let's see, Bernard. <laughs> there you are. You are now typewriter hunter. I just made Yay. you. One. Oh, okay. congratulations, <laughs> Bernardo! Very good. <laughs> you got to know the right person. It's that easy. So. <laughs> Who else wants to be one? I'll look you up. I think I, uh, I, think I, I am already. Uh, yeah, I think I'm already there. Yes, and I'm also a Patreon. Hey, Greg, I'm going to okay. have to go. Before I go, I wanted to show just a couple uh, pictures from that same uh, photo shoot. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so definitely. my wife and I uh, went and shot at Larry's typewriter shop and his dad's shop. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the typewriters that was at uh, Clem Schultz's on his desk. This is another one that's Richard Molman's. I don't know what this thing is. Anybody? Um, we can't see I, what you're I, talking about. Yeah, I'm actually uh, trying to add it to this. Oh, sorry. It's a little slow. Whoa. Oh. Inception. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a bar lock. Looks like a yeah, yeah. This, was, this was what Clem was working on. He was doing some kind of welding. Um, but this is bar a lock. Yeah, this is <laughs> a lot of pieces. Um, oh, I'll show you a couple other things. Uh, so he had this Triumph, and a Smith Premier. That's my wife, and that's uh, Clem. Clem's in his, I think he's 90. He's been doing this for forever, and he still does it to this day. Um, let's see what that is. That looks like a Remington. Yeah. Number six. Yeah. Ooh. Two, very nice. Yeah, yeah. So then they have Connex, you know, in the back, and he opened it up, and I was, you know, I, there's so many typewriters in there; it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of neat to see Clem and, and Larry, you know, both their shops and the stuff that they had. And, yeah. yeah. So. Ooh, this is beautiful. definitely one I, I don't know anything about, but it looks like a furnace or something. You know? <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Royal Barlock. Yeah. The keys look like an Oliver key because they're octagonal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. It is so a full key machine. Yeah. To repair. I mean, he's got you know pocket knife. I know that we were just talking about tools uh, yeah. last week, and yeah. Joe just had a video about tools, and here you go. This is what they use. Wow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. <laughs> My dog told me it's time. Um, all right, guys. It's been nice. Hi, Dave. Yeah. Right. Take care. See you, you later. Thank you. We'll see you guys. Thank you, Take David. Care. Care. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> well, I have a uh, – <clears throat> I don't know how to pull up uh, uh, another screen on my – I'm using an iPad here. But uh, I have an app on my iPad called Typography Insight, and um, I believe it's a it's a paid app, but it's really great. Uh, if you're interested in type, uh, I lo I happen to love it because it allows you to um, understand all the different nomenclature of, of type, and then you can bring up type uh, and overlap them, see what the subtle differences are, et cetera, et cetera. It's very, 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 very interesting. What was that it's called again? Typography Insight. Okay. Know, Greg, you, does anybody know how I can swap screens on my um, iPad? Uh, not an iPad. It, I think it would be tricky. What's an iPad? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe try the home key. Try the home key. And then like, if you double press the home key, you'll get a list of all your screens. And you can select another one. Try that. Oh, I did something. Yeah, that's a different screen. 
<laughs> Either that or he's in the dark. I think he lost <laughs> or he turned out his lights, yeah. I still have electricity here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we killed Bill. Uh, <laughs> kill Bill. <laughs> Bill's, Bill's gone. Can, can anybody see that? No. 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 Okay. You're just in a, uh, a, a blank void. Let me see. Uh, let me do, do this here. Uh, display. Yeah. Uh, Reselect the same window. And... Mm. Oh, Bill. I love how all of us typewriter guys are trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not our natural element. No, <laughs> no, it's not at all. <laughs> oh, well, I I want to show something off. No, okay. yeah, tangentially typeface related. Did you see this? Oh one? yes. Ooh. Oh, oh me. yes. Nice. <laughs> did you so, did you do that, Brian? I did. Um, yeah. I'll show you. I have some better pictures of it. Let me go to my share screen. I think I know how to do this. Maybe. Um, let me share your screen. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> I can do it. Ah, why is this happening? Oh, crud. <laughs> you're a typewriter guy trying to do tech? <laughs> I know, right? It sounded easy before I did it. Okay, sure. I think... Greg has to enable it. You have to click it. And he oh, has to... is that is that true? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting for it to appear on my moderation screen. Hmm. Oh, I don't crap. see it. Okay, I'll just hold things up in front of the camera. That works fine. That too. works too. <laughs> so, uh, it's how close I can get. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, so, but it's it's cheating in a lot of ways. What I did was, I um, uh, I scanned in, uh, like ten pages of type. Um, to uh, the, out of my for my Hermes three thousand, and a lot of them are mistyped. So like, for the letter A, I've got like twelve or fifteen A's, where I hit it really soft, and then harder and then harder, and then I banged on it, and um, with different settings and multiple tries, and some of them are double strikes, some of them are, are really light and faint, but um, and I wrote a program that uh, that sorts them all out and figures out what's the best fit for each spot. Oh wow! Ooh. Determines density. Yes. Oh, well, and actually shape. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll pick up line art and do like slash where there should be a diagonal line and things like that. Oh, nice! That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that's very neat. So it's <laughs> and, and I've got it restricted to a, a sixty-five characters wide with a one-inch margin on each side. So it's it's actually stuff that you could type on the Hermes three thousand if you were some kind of genius computer, but. <laughs> it's all things that are possible, but not necessarily done that way. Very Anyways, cool. that was fun. Wow, That's cool. very good. Don't tell. <laughs> Does anybody have anything new on the typewriter front? Yes. I had my see it. brother charger. Oh, nice. Has anybody heard of the, the 22 or is it? No, oh, I have an 11, but I haven't heard of the 22. Well, the, the research that I did on YouTube brought me to um, Joe's uh, episode 52 for the mm -hmm. Charger 11. Oh. And I think the difference between the 11 and the 22 is the label. Uh, one's, twi <laughs> one's twice as good. Um, <laughs> this has a. Uh, The uh, light and heart setting. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. And, it's, and the uh, the ribbon color. The bichrome. Mm -hmm. Ah, is, yeah. And the tab. And the tabs. Okay. Yeah. They're, 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 oh, tabs definitely. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're preset tabs. Right. Oh, Every gosh, ten okay. faces. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, something mm -hmm. I noticed in in your episode, Joe, at the beginning. Like this one, you were having the the ribbon was catching up into the vibrator. Yeah. Now, um, the ribbon was spooled in incorrectly in this one when I got it. Okay. Normally, 
nor normally on most typewriters you feed in from behind the holder in front of the ribbon vibrator but this one here is the opposite you, you go into the into the the holder and then behind the vibrator uh -huh. okay and one yeah you always it, do behind the vibrator yeah yeah, yeah. well i don't know it, it, anyhow it was different yeah 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 I, I noticed that's what fixed it now the other Very thing cool. with this one here is my uh question mark slug is set lower than the, than all the rest of them so how difficult is it or how much skill do you need to, to reset that uh if the entire slug is uh is is low you can fix that by forming the type bar with uh, type bar pliers. Um, if it's just the one character on on the slug and the other character on the bottom is is fine, uh, you can use maulers to spread that spread them apart from each other uh, by physically um, deforming the type bar uh, slug. Well, uh, otherwise, if it's if it's just completely low on the on the type bar, you have yeah. to. Uh, unsolder it and resolder it, which is yeah. not an easy thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The other thing I would ask is: is the character centered in its space horizontally, or mm -hmm. does it look yeah. like it's a little to one side or another? Um, because I've seen where bending it side to side, bending the type R side to side can, can sometimes make it go between upper left and lower right, depending on whether it's on the left or right side of the of the mm. uh, segment, uh, without having to maul the actual or to bend the, the uh, type R this way. Um, so you also want to look and see how the type bar, how the slug goes into the type guide that's rubbing on one of the sides sometimes that'll yeah. cause it to move right at the last second and yeah. be mispositioned. So it so, may not be as bad of an adjustment as you think. You just got to look and see if it's yeah. rubbing on the type guide and it, is it a little bit upper left, lower right, or is it centered good, it's just too low, you know? I think it is just too low because even when it's set, when they're all set back in, in the machine, you can feel it, it is lower than the other one. So uh, it's like what, that's it just yeah resoldering yeah yeah or forming the type bar more First often than not it's yeah. forming the type bar you want yeah. to do yeah because yeah. soldering is a um, much more intricate and uh, yeah. thing to do <laughs> now another thing is i find that um if unless i'm typing hard you, you get that little faint on the bottom of the characters now I thought someone was mentioning in a previous episode here about there's two different adjustments. Like I, I, I know there's yeah. the adjustment for the, the uppercase and lowercase, the two the yeah. little bolts on, on the side, but is right. there another adjustment for the whole bridge? Some machines have a platen or a carriage adjustment like this Hermes 3000 I showed you earlier. Um, there, there is a set screw, a set of set screws that positions the carriage back and forth, which is actually slanted. So, um, yeah, there is kind of a master adjustment for the carriage, but is it doing it on all uh, characters, both upper and lowercase, John? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, it could just be. Um, it, it could maybe it needs both the motion and on feet both set. You yeah, know. you want to you want to start with the motion or not the motion, but the on feet. The on feet, yeah. Uh, which is the capital letters. You want to get them centered on the on the platen, and not doing yeah. shadowing or fading on either either the top or the bottom. And once you've got that uh, the on feet done, then you adjust the motion, which is the lowercase letters, to to match. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the only problem is that this is um, metric, and the only wrenches I have are. Just the, the standard. Oh yeah. So you know, and time to buy some tools. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the wrenches that I have are from Morris. So uh, I guess I can access yeah, them through Amazon. Yeah, or 
if you happen to have a Harbor Freight Tools or some kind of store like that that has import tools, they have metric ignition yeah. wrenches or open end wrenches. Maybe even an auto parts store might have open end ignition wrenches that are metric. A lot of metric yeah. automobiles now. Um, oh, the other thing, what's the production years for this? Because from what's reading the serial these, number? This, the, the serial number is a two. Okay, is so it it's nineteen seventy two. Okay. Yeah, that particular body style is very, very uh, recognizable as a nineteen seventies one. The the rounded brother logo you have on there that's definitely a 70s one uh, -huh. okay. uh if it was post 1980 it would have uh black white or black silver white for the color selector uh mm -hmm. because they started they basically started putting those nasty correction ribbons in after 1980 <laughs> and because you have black silver red that's a 19 that's a pre-1980 one yeah and what, what's the color code in this? The color code? Uh, I don't know that there is color codes. Oh, they painted okay. them all kinds of colors. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Those are nice machines. I, yeah, I didn't have to do any cleaning on it, really. A little bit in the basket, but other than that, I'm not even touching it. Yeah. yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah, my, how much? 20 Oh wow. wow! Nice. That's good. Good price. The, the ad, the ad said twenty dollars, and I'm communicated with, uh, I guess the wife, and she says, "Well, the husband will be home." So then I go and see him, and then uh, I give him the twenty dollar bill, and he's there. Oh, he's there, and I'll have five. So he, he was asked, <laughs> he was looking for fifteen. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, twenty. But, yeah. So. <laughs> Nice. I was out of luck, and he was yeah. way out of town, so it's not like I was gonna uh, buy a five dollar bill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My first uh, typewriter since I've been collecting now uh, was a Brother Charger Eleven, and I founded that uh, Salvation Army. Uh, on the bottom, they had written twenty for twenty dollars. But they were having a sixty percent off sale, which made it eight dollars. <laughs> yeah, and it it worked fine. You know, during the thrift store, you know, of course they had the ribbon all. I think it was upside down and then twisted and all this stuff. And uh, so I, you know, I fixed that. Did a quick test typing there in the store and it worked beautifully. And it was it was mine very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's a little blue one. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying. Yeah. I I think I did determine that it was early '80s. I'm trying to remember the ribbon selector though. Yeah, if it yeah. was, if it doesn't have a red position, uh, if it's a white position instead of a red position, then that would be post. Well, it'd be 1980 or after. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And then you can you can just tell by the date code. Uh, the last, uh, the second or the second character in the brother serial number, it'll be a letter and then a number. The second, that actual, that, uh, if I can talk, <laughs> that number after the letter is the last digit of the year. And oh. so you just need to figure out what decade it was made in, which is okay. pretty easy based on the, on the features. Okay. Uh, say after 1974, you get a lot of them with black keys instead of white keys. Um, in and then in 1980, you get the the different ribbon color selector, and you can tell from the badging in a lot of times. Um, and there, it's a little bit mysterious, but it's pretty easy to figure out. Okay, and of course, we can always refer to the typewriter database. Yep, all the rules are there. There's, I made a whole list of rules that you follow to figure out what decade it's from. Very good. Very good. I wanted to I wanted to mention in the thank comments. You, that, thank you, Ted. I want to mention in the comments that Brenda Blomberg made a comment. Hey, Brenda, she's uh, one of the. Uh, I've met her before, and she's a great typewriter person. I was going to mm -hmm. mention guys, since I made that video last week about the Hermes three thousand. I added some 
missing washers to underneath the the uh, carriage return lever, and it's now much less wobbly. And that was the the cause of the scratching on the ribbon cover. Uh -huh. And I, I, I suggested in my blog article this morning that this machine looks like it was serviced at one time by somebody that didn't really know what they were doing, and. It, it, they probably left a washer or two out from underneath that carriage return arm and then gave it back to the customer. And, and that wobbliness caused the bottom of that arm to scratch the ribbon cover as it was used subsequent to that. And then also the bent frame, the chassis was bent in the back rear corner, but the body panel wasn't. So I almost suspect it was dropped uh, or damaged in the typewriter shop. You know, mm -hmm. when it was made apart is kind of what I think. So... <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Joe, I know nothing. I know nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> All I can say is <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Bill. It's a great machine, though. It, I love it. it and it, it types great now. It just was fun fun fixing it because every typewriter has its own unique history and story to tell, right? So <laughs> you can have your Brenda says, a, 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 No, you can't. <laughs> I'm happy to have it. I'm happy. Oh, the letter is on the way. Oh, thank you, Brad. Yes, yes. I want to I try a little experiment here, if you don't mind, Greg. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. So, oops. yes. Let's see if I can get this right. Oh, Type there you go. The insight. Okay. Right, uh -huh. so let's say you want to understand. You want to understand what all the little terms mean uh, there's apex there's crossbar uh, there's mm. stem. okay so let's go back here to um there's type type inspector okay there's a lot of different ways to um uh, to change it you can see text you can see um all the fonts that they have here okay try that Oops. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. We don't want that. All right. So there's lots and lots of typefaces. This is really ridiculous. Anyway. These are just some historical typefaces that, that oh, you yeah. can come So Helvetica. Yep. Nice. Very cool. It's interesting that, that people make their living creating these typefaces. Yeah. I There's it, actually a documentary called Helvetica. It's a ah, history of yes, yes. a very cool documentary. Yeah. Well, thanks for the tip. Now yep. you'll you'll um, you'll notice here on the list that um, Prestige is not in there. That's because uh -huh. Prestige Prestige is a is owned by the International Type for Graphical Company. There are a lot of typefaces that are um, uh, proprietary. Yes. Notice that um, you can uh, order fonts from Adobe Typekit, but um, those are going to be, um, let's see here, you have to sign into Adobe and download the fonts. A lot of fonts are, um, as, as I said, proprietary, oh. and um, you need you, you either need permission or you need to buy, buy the font, yeah. or uh, as uh, in the computer world, you lease the font. Uh, <laughs> But this has everything, um, and then um, you can use it to um, juxtapose. You can you can compare the two like this. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, or you can. Um, Ah, uh, you can overlay. Oh wow! One against the other. Yeah. 
there's you can compare. Does you ever see that? All right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, enough show and tell. Wow. <laughs> I love hey. it. I like yeah, that's pretty. I like uh... Type and compare them, and and um, having been a a typesetter and a printer, and um, having worked with cold and hot type, um, it's sort of um, in my blood. Yeah, exactly. I, I use a. a I, I'm I'm delving a little bit into fonts here as opposed to typefaces, but um, I use a website called One Thousand One Free Fonts, and. Um, they have uh, public domain fonts. Uh, uh, some are, I guess, are considered donationware, shareware, and commercial, of course. Uh, but yeah, there's all kinds of fonts on there. So yeah, I look on there, and even the just limiting it to the public domain fonts, you can find some really cool ones. But now, if we can just get those. On a typewriter. <laughs> yes. Right. We have to go back 94 years and have Hammond make them for us. Yeah, <laughs> actually, right, actually, right here on on the screen, we have a sculptor, Bernardo. Yes. Uh, Bernardo can start making typefaces for us. <laughs> 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 yeah. Actually, so. I, th I think this this app is is gonna be. Very interesting. Thanks for, yeah. the, for the tip. Yeah, that's great. As as some of you know, I, I, I work in commemorative medals, and the lettering on, on the medals is a very important part of, oh, the, yeah. of the medal. So I have a, an intrinsic interest in typography. So thanks again, Bill. I'm going to check that out. That's I guess excellent. I'm going to spend 229 for learning about all of those things. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. And before we get further, uh, welcome to Alton. How are hey. you, sir? Hey, thanks for letting me in uh, late as I usually am. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> I, I yeah, finished so, teaching and sent him away, uh, you know, tired. And yeah, boring. yeah. And now, do you, do you have uh, a preference for typeface or do you have any interesting typefaces? I'm trying to build a joke based on whether or not I have an interesting <laughs> face, but I'm coming up dry. Um, no, I have, you know, I've got a wide, I've got 50 typewriters, so there's a wide variety of things. Okay. I found that I, I don't like uh, any of the italicized. I don't think it reads well. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be nice for some things, but uh, no, I'm really, I'm really not that, uh, that particular. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything uh, new in your world as far as typewriters? No. Uh, not as far as typewriters go. No. Okay. No. Okay. So. What about on the on the writing front? Well, still trying to do that. Still mentoring some people, and um, uh, so I'm having a good time with all of that. It's uh, you know, staying out of the way of. COVID viruses, you know, dodging yes. stuff like that. So, yes. uh, so pretty much the same as uh, last week. Not much has changed on that, but the writing, I'm, I'm getting a little behind I'm, on the project my son and I are doing. Uh. Well, same my son and people think, you know, a 12 year old, he, guy's in his 40s. So, <laughs> um, has, it's, I think, six books out or something like that. Um, I always remind him I have 50, but. <laughs> Two of them are good, and uh, <laughs> but, uh, so I still have some work to do on that. I'll yeah. be getting back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, uh, if, you want to, if you want to blend the two things dealing with typography, uh, when I get frustrated when I'm writing that I don't feel like I'm producing enough uh, pages, uh, uh, we usually in publishing you work in the Times New Roman because everyone has it. The publishing industry is driven by Microsoft Word now. Um, they used to convert it to a different software, but I don't even think they do that anymore uh, with that. But the one thing you can do is move from a proportional font to a non-proportional font. So I would just uh, control A and get the whole document and then uh, switch it to courier type and pick up 50 pages. 
uh, without <laughs> typing a single letter. So <laughs> that's creative. Can't send it in that way, but you know, for a few moments, I go, "Hey, that was a productive day." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, and uh, Joe, uh, do you have anything in the pipeline? Uh, well. Not really. I mean, I have I have a whole list of ongoing video projects, and I'll be doing one or two videos this week, I hope. Um, but uh, it's when I when I start my weekend on Sunday mornings, I generally don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but as far as <laughs> typewriter typewriter projects, uh, well, I, I'm not really sure yet. But I did want to share this one thing as I was going through all my previous. Uh, Flickr images of my typecasts. Um, I want to share my screen here briefly and uh, let's see, share screen and share. Let's see, wait for the thing to here go, share. Um, so this image right here is taken with an iPhone, but this is an idea that I had if you're typing up some kind of stream of consciousness piece and every paragraph is a different subject, then in the left margin in red, I'll type a little brief synopsis of what that paragraph is about. Oh. So if you're, if you're doing some like, just, you know, like I say, random typing of all kinds of different subjects, you know, then you have a little index of what each thing is about. And it makes you see a kind of a snapshot of what you typed subject wise. So okay, that's kind of a little a little idea I'll throw up there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like an annotation, <laughs> like an annotation. Yeah, that's where you use your uh, margin uh, release button and backspace to yes. behind your <laughs> to your left margin to do that. <laughs> Very good. So, Very good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have anything? Well, I, I was thinking of. Oh, go, John. Oh, no, no, the only thing is because uh, Joe was talking about the stream of conscious, and then I was thinking about when, you know, the, the role of paper. What about the concept uh, of getting those um, dot matrix leaf papers? You know, like yeah. The, and then running those for uh, typewriters. Yeah. I think a like a 12 inch carriage machine, maybe like a galaxy 12 or something might work really well for that. Have you tried that tip? Have you tried the uh... dot matrix paper? Uh, yeah, I have a, I have a box of that. Uh, it's called a fan. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with the tear off edges yeah. with yeah. the holes in them. Uh, I've got a box of that and I generally have used it uh, when I, didn't have this set up. I had a typewriter on this desk, and I would have that fan fold paper just running inside of it. Um, that was usually the. It's pretty handy because the pages tear off, also, right? At, at each yeah. fold, you can you separate the pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be nice to have. Yep, you can find that stuff at thrift yeah. stores every once in a while. It's it's becoming yeah. rarer, it'd, it'd but nice uh, you can still find it. Copies, like Two or three copies. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be. Oh, keep a, yeah. Keep a copy. You know, you can also use something off somewhere. That's right. You can you can still buy. Uh, uh, Nakusa makes uh, NCR paper, oh, yeah. which is no carbon required. Oh. Uh, and you you get a stack of that. If you get two part, you can take the top sheet off when you pull it out of the ream and put it on the bottom, and then put a weight on there and stick it on a table. And then they have this. Uh, special glue that you can buy that uh, you kind of wipe it on there with a brush and let it dry for a couple hours and then it just breaks apart into two part uh, sets that you can use. I actually have uh, well I have where do where do I have them? Somewhere around here. Oh wait, here we go. That's NCR, right? Yes. I uh, I, brief I briefly worked in a Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I briefly worked in a, a print shop, so yeah. Yeah, I printed on a lot of that stuff, and uh, yeah, I have some here. In fact, my old letterhead uh. on two-part paper. 
Oh. <laughs> so you could glue those together is what you're saying, Ted? Yeah, uh, they, it's a special formulation of glue that reacts with the chemicals that are coating the paper. So oh. if you take the whole stack when you buy it and uh, stack it all up on a table and put a weight on top, uh, and then you just paint the one edge with that glue all the way across the ream. When it dries, you can actually just pick up the whole stack and fan fan it apart. Yep. And it'll just come apart in, in these two-part sets. Yeah, it's oh, pretty wow. amazing, actually. Yeah. It's like magic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have uh, a recent purchase. Uh, I, I believe this was from eBay. Oh, Carbonless paper. Oh. So, wow. um, and it's very well aged. <laughs> <laughs> so, this could be interesting to see if if the chemicals still interact. You have the white copy and then the yellow copy underneath. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I believe on the back side of the white it has a certain chemical, and then on the front side of the yellow it has a certain chem chemical and interact. Yep. That's right, Ted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, each each page is uh, specially chemically treated, and uh, see, for instance, this one is a three part, the same oh, yeah. letterhead. Yeah, but it has a pink sheet on the back, so you can yeah. do three copies. <laughs> the customer always gets the pink sheet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so. <funny. laughs> I, I actually have some four part around here somewhere oh, that I haven't glued. <laughs> You uh, uh, want to keep lots of copies of those letters, huh? <laughs> well, that was, I printed those way back when I uh, still had access to the print shop. So I had. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, anytime there was <laughs> like a stack of paper that was like not a size that we could use, um, like a lot of times it came in parent sheets of like 36 or 24 inches that we'd have to cut down. To, yeah. Uh, the, the actual size, and you'd have, you know, weird sizes left over yeah, when you cut out the sheet you needed so i would take those yeah. and uh i have stacks of that stuff uh just lying okay. around yeah <laughs> left over from you know 10 years ago yeah 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 i, I am hoping to do a, a video on this um just a, a separate video to see like how well it still works and how it is to type on and um, I don't know that I would have a need for carbon copies, but uh, or carbonless copies. <laughs> but uh, and speaking of which, I do actually have some some carbon paper, um, mm -hmm. which I haven't tested that. But my thought with the with the uh, carbon paper was um, using it maybe for a typewriter that doesn't have a ribbon. Mm -hmm. So you could yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, yep. Also, built-in backing sheet. So yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Oh, there's you Kitty. <laughs> bring a bring a half size or quarter size sheet of carbon paper with a regular sheet of paper behind it. Bring it with you when you go to a thrift store, and then when you find a typewriter without a, a ribbon, you can still test the oh, imprint. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah, that really is. And then someone else mentioned uh, that uh, for letter writing, it's a lot of times it's a good idea to have a record of what you wrote. That way, when you type. Three months later, you don't say the same thing all over again, you know. <laughs> yeah, like I always do. <laughs> we have uh, Sarah here in the comments. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> How are you, Sarah? <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, what is that, Ted? Uh, this is Boomer. <laughs> is a, a is that mackerel tabby? Okay. Is and, that the uh, drumming cat? This is the drumming cat. She likes to be drummed <laughs> and held like a baby. Oh! <laughs> did did you have her since she was a kitten? Uh, no, she was a bar cat. Oh! Uh, my wife uh, went to a oh, what is it? Something lemon show, blind lemon show, and uh, the after party for the the show was at a bar, and. Uh, she, they were in this bar eating, you know, bar food, and uh, this cat just comes right up and wants to wants to be fed and wants attention. And they tried to get rid of it, and she wouldn't go away. So uh, <laughs> she took her home, and uh, so we have a we have a, a new cat. 
<laughs> wow. The new, the new cat some, I think it was nine years ago, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all, all of my cats are found. They were, they were found. They came to us. Yeah. And uh, we don't, basically, you never have to buy a cat. You just yeah. <laughs> look, look around and they'll come to you. Oh, my goodness. They, we have so many in our neighborhood. <laughs> they adopt you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But yeah. that one, she has a lot of personality. She just, I mean, I, I can see why oh, you know, she you li- lived at a bar. Indra yeah. has some stuff to show us. Okay. Look at that. Oh, nice. Just, uh, a quick look. I got three Roy's here. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Man. This is Smith Corona, Smith Corona, I think. I got, yep. uh, I think, two Skywriters over here. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a um, Hermes or uh, Olympia. Uh, Olympia. Olympia, yeah. This is a, uh, a machine for the blind. Oh, Braille. Yeah, Braille. Uh, okay. This is a Smith Corona. Uh, I, got, I got so many. This is an Imperial. Yeah. Uh, good that's companion. A, that's a good condition, this one. Yeah. That's a that's a big one. Off, but it's a big one. Yeah. Is that yeah. the one where the type basket comes out and you can replace the type basket? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Those are neat. Uh, um yeah, I, I want to show you one little thing, which is uh I got it all on the floor as well. I hope you can see it over here on the floor. Uh it's difficult. Uh, yeah, it's dark. Can you see it? That's a little better. It's a Telex. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, it's a typewriter. And I try I'm trying to hook it up on my radios because they're still um telex signals. Oh wow. So, um, you gotta do packet packet uh I have uh, a paper with it. Radio, yeah. Um, yeah, and it uh, it works, um, but it's uh, I can't I can't get it hooked up properly, so it's a bit difficult. Mm-hmm. But it should work, and it's a typewriter. It's a, it's mechanical, so mm-hmm. if I start it up, it will start typing. But I I can only receive. Mm. So, oh, okay. Then, uh, there's another Smith Corona on the floor, which is uh, just a uh, for parts. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a Triumph in the corner over there. Yeah, Ooh. Uh, got a Olympia over here. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a bit messy, but I got lots and lots of typewriters. But um, before I forget, um, for the next, uh, maybe the next time, I don't know. But there's an interesting thing about the old typewriters that uh, were showed in the beginning. I think mm-hmm. uh, from the 40s, maybe from the 50s, it's like VHS and Betamax, like the. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, there were very um, different types of mechanical mechanical typewriters, and mm-hmm. they, it looked to me like they all disappeared, and it was just a basket. Yeah, and then right. only from the seventies and eighties, the electronic ones came with the daisy wheels and the uh, the balls. Right. Um, so, what was the reason? Is the reason like the the story between v- VHS and Betamax that they simply choose chose for uh, one system? Uh, market forces, market yes. forces. Yeah, and beta was better, by the way. <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, the other thing is, uh, everybody mentioned, uh, nobody mentioned the italic. If I find oh. a typewriter with an italic typeface, I will get it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, but they're very hard to find. I guess they're easy to find online, but yeah, that's not the sport. You have to run into it, I think, and then. Uh, but hopefully I'll get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have an italic typeface typewriter, but I guess I don't really think I want one necessarily, or I haven't really desired one, but um, it's the kind of a thing where you don't really want to use italic on every application. You know, like it seems like a, pers- a personal letter, italic works really well, or a script machine, either one. But for most typing it's not, they're not desirable, I don't think, you know. Yeah. The only, the only reason I, I can imagine is I write a letter, but uh, maybe one one line I want to add. In yeah. Te- right. Uh, that would be cool. But it would be, yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's really the reason why, you know, so many of these typewriters just have the standard typewriter font, because that's, right. 
generally what people want to write in and it's kind of universal. Uh, it's a little bit of a surprise. If I get one in a thrift store or whatever, it's always a surprise what kind of typeface it would have. Okay. Well, speaking, of, speaking of typeface, I did want to ask you guys about the Hermes here. Is it has, um, if I can hold it up here, let's see where there's a square bracket key right here. So mm -hmm. it has parentheses, but it also has a square bracket, which is kind of unusual, I think. And it also has a single three quarter fraction, but it doesn't have the one quarter, one half fraction. And it, it doesn't have a number one either. So it's kind of an interesting keyboard. I don't know why they wanted a square bracket. And I wonder uh, if it was a, a, a special order. It was a special order, certainly. Yeah. If, if you got a three quarter key, that means they pulled off the, the fractions, the other two fractions and uh, substituted them with the square brackets, which was yeah. a common practice. Yeah. I think it costs like five bucks to do when <clears throat> you ordered it new. I see. Yeah, I think the guy that owned this originally was in was a professor or something up in upstate California. Mm -hmm. And then later on, they moved to Idaho, according to the sticker. There's a, a uh, cardboard label from a ribbon, a replacement ribbon that has the address of a typewriter shop in in Idaho somewhere. So I, it looks like they moved up to Idaho. Anyways, yeah, it's interesting how people ordered special ordered typefaces. And I wonder what application he had, what need he had for square brackets. Um, maybe as a professor, would there be some kind of special way you wrote, you wrote with a lot of like bracketed kind of excerpts or something? I don't know. Uh, Probably, yeah. Uh Depends on what he was doing, but it, yeah. you know, has has applications in math and right. science and yep. uh, Martin Martin Dr. Titel. Dr. Titel. Yes, yes, there he is. Um, I thought I'd show this because I picked up this article uh, not too long ago. Uh, this was, uh, you know, Martin Titel. Um, mm -hmm. He would basically he was a dealer who would uh, basically make any keyboard that you wanted on a typewriter that was kind of his specialty and uh, he even designed his own typewriter this one right here if you ever see this mm -hmm. there's one in the world and that's it right there wow built by martin titel um so yeah he could do like 147 different languages uh he would you know uh put any kind of typeface you wanted on a typewriter and, and modify the machine to, to work with it. Mm. Uh, so if you, if you catch one of his, if you get one of his stickers, uh, I don't know if there's a picture of his sticker, his dealer sticker, but it's a, I've seen it before and it's kind of a, a outline of a man uh, walking mm. in a, in a hat and uh, Titel typewriters. Uh, if you see that, you want to take a special look at the typefaces that on that machine because uh, you might just have one of his specially made machines. Wow. <laughs> Martin, so my, go ahead. Martin told me a story once. Um, I knew him. I knew him not well, but I, I knew I knew him well enough to call him Martin. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I visited his his shop in lower Manhattan several times. And um, he was very kind. He, uh, he tell, he tells a story where he re set uh, 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 a set of Smith Corona typewriters in Thai, the Thai alphabet. Okay. Uh, back uh, in the fifties. And um, he went back to Thailand to visit, with his wife and he noticed that the one of the characters Martin was very Martin noticed uh, typefaces as, as you might imagine yeah <laughs> and he looked at one he looked at the writing and he noticed one of the Thai characters was upside down in you know billboards in publications books newspapers everything like that and he traced it he traced that upside down character back to the typewriter, the typewriters he reset for the Thai government. He had accidentally 
reversed <laughs> the um, well, one of the t one of the um, uh, one of the tight bars. Wow! And it became part and of their no language. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> what a story! <laughs> in, in in his shop, which was extensive, his shop had um, he was on um, he was on the third floor of an office building, a very very old office building down in 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 Wall Street, and he had hundreds. Of, he had these. Um, cabinets with hundreds of uh, tiny drawers about the size of an old-fashioned library card catalog and in them on, on, on the front was a the typeface the um, typeface and then he had another set of uh, cabinets with hundreds of drawers with um, keycaps mm -hmm. keycaps for every uh, alphabet in the world and he he um he could recut his 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 claim to fame was that he could reset a an upright Smith Corona or an Underwood or Remington he could reset um all the keys on a on a typewriter for any language and particularly during the war World War II that is and after the World War II he made a lot of he had a lot of business in resetting uh standard uh typewriters with standard latin alphabet to cyrillic and that's where okay. he made a lot of money doing that during the cold war wow all right i'm sorry i have to interrupt uh, my dinner is ready downstairs so I all right <laughs> what's for dinner <laughs> uh we call it stumpot <laughs> stumpot oh <laughs> it's uh, vegetables and potatoes sounds good okay. Oh, it is. Have a, have a pleasant <laughs> evening. Thank uh, you so much, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Time. Thanks very much. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Bye bye. He was. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Martin was a, quite a. Uh, he was a, a. They didn't call him Mister Typewriter for nothing. I'll just say no. That. He was a giant in the field. Yep. Yeah. He was always dressed. Whenever I saw him, he was always dressed in a. Brand new, freshly washed and starched white lab coat. Huh. <laughs> yes. I think I need a lab coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a suit underneath. Oh, usually. <laughs> I thought you were showing us something that dead. <laughs> I was trying to, but uh, oh, wait, there we go. I know what happened. I opened up a different window. And now I can't figure out. There we go. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, I was just going to show off this little uh, thing that I was uh, looking at uh, <laughs> that Chipman Ward did in the 50s. You wow. could have emphasis control. Wow. wow. Switch from, from bold <laughs> to light. And in, in, on your typewriter, they would re stencil the, the writing on it and basically just give you a different ribbon. That was differently inked, depending on uh -huh. what uh, what, uh, what elevation you did on the ribbon. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> they they really uh, put a bunch of uh, uh, questionable upgrades on machines. <laughs> wow. Oomph, more oomph, more oomph. <laughs> Emphasis <laughs> control. Wow. But, uh, yeah, that's all it was. Is just a just a ribbon. Wow. That's funny. <laughs> I'm just kind of paging through old dealer stuff. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I have nothing else. I was just paging through. Okay. So. <laughs> now I, I I do have uh, my my local friend here, uh, Bob. He's with us as local typewriter club. So that's our, hey. our local group here. And um, he's. Basically asking, uh, does anybody know why VHS won over beta? Uh, cheaper machines. Yeah. Cheaper Easy. machines. And it was also <laughs> the, the length of the cassette. So yeah. beta cartridges were L500 and L750, which was the length of the tape in meters. So an L500 tape was 500 meters. And 
But uh, the VHS was a standard T120, which is two hours, and an L500 was probably only like an hour and a half, I think. So uh, you couldn't fit a lot of movies on one cassette on a beta, uh, and they would have to make a, a dual cassette issue for a rental tape. And so that was one of the reasons why VHS was more desirable by the dealers, by video rental stores. Um, beta was a better technology, I think. Of course, I'm biased because I went to Sony beta school. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> little good that did me. <laughs> hey, now you still got a job. I still yeah, got a job. Go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But uh, now, yeah, so you went. <laughs> Now, I don't know if it's true, but I, I heard a, a more nefarious reason. Um, basically, Beta or Sony was not willing to work with the yeah. questionable markets. So, well, there was, a, yeah, the, the porn market. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so there was a, a licensing thing also, right? Because VHS, the, the patent was owned by JVC, and they licensed the patents to other manufacturers. So that's where there was a lot of different manufacturers of VHS, whereas um, the only other manufacturer of beta was Sanyo. Sanyo made some beta machines. But so it was really Sony didn't want to license their their machine design, or if they did, it was too much money, uh, you know. So they were trying to be protective. Yeah. What is interesting though is the design of the Beta Transport was was really originated from the three quarter inch Umatic. The predecessor was a big giant cassette, and it it used a wrapper wrapped around the drum instead of the VHS, which is kind of a Y wrap. And when you get into the Super 8 or the 8 millimeter video format, the tiny camcorder tapes that came after beta, those threaded up very similar to VHS, but they still used a lot of the beta kind of technology. Like mm -hmm. uh, uh, beta, when they went to hi-fi sound, beta came out with hi-fi sound first, they had more room in the spectrum so they could fit the hi-fi channels between the black and white part of the video and the color subcarrier, whereas VHS had to have a separate set of heads so they could record the, the hi-fi sound on, in a deep layer underneath the top layer in, on the magnetic tape. So, the, so VHS hi-fi needed more heads. Beta hi-fi didn't need an extra set of heads, so that was another difference, right? So anyways. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking you back to your school days there <laughs> yeah you know the crazy thing is i can almost remember some of the specs like the frequencies of the color subcarrier or something crazy like that <laughs> I, I still think of that some of that stuff i don't know well. 688 kilohertz i think was the uh, beta subcarrier frequency anyways yeah that's all <laughs> dead technology right but it's still a little bit up here yeah 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 Anyway, I think I think we're just about ready to wrap up. Does anybody yeah. have uh, any last minute things they want to talk about or show or? Yeah, I'd like to to make a recommendation or. Okay. Okay. I I write a a journal, but I like to keep a digital backup. So I've I've been using the Microsoft Office Lens app. Oh. oh, the advantage the advantage of this app is it crops automatically, detects the, the detects the the edges of the, oh I can show you this. It automatically detects the edges of the paper. Yes, and, yes. And you can apply a, a high contrast filter afterwards. And it, yeah. It's a very crisp, very crisp text. Mm. Nice. So yeah. Does it also do it OCR, uh, Bernardo? Does it OCR it into a digital I don't, file? I don't think it okay. does, no. Okay. Okay. Just pr produces PDFs or, or JPEGs, uh, whatever you I see. Right. Yeah. Okay. But for backing up the typewritten text, I like using that. That's good. I just, I just, you know, point it. don't have to really worry about having it perfectly parallel and... Even in low brightness, I can get a, a very sharp contrast, and I think that's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. We, I, we I enjoy we, it. Yeah, we use something similar at, at work when we're scanning 
uh, papers for patrons and whatnot. And uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's really amazing how it, it will straighten everything out like you're, you know, doing it perfectly aligned. So, yep. yeah, that, that's a good way to do it. And I, I know Joe uh, has experimented with different ways of scanning his, uh, his pages yeah. there. So. Yeah, I'm currently using my iPhone is usually the way I do it. But I'm using an older iPhone 6S, but it still works pretty good. You got to have bright light, just a lot of light. It helps. Yeah. yeah. The only problem I really have with a phone is there's uh, field curvature. The lines along the edge are yes. curved, and yeah. uh, even on some of my uh, cam, my uh, digital camera lenses do the same thing. Um, you sort of have to zoom out, zoom if with a telephoto lens to get a more of a linear field, and then you have to get back, and then your aperture is smaller, and then you need more light, and you know it's just a hassle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where are you oh, showing us there, Ted? Oh, I was uh, just showing um, this tool that I saw in, in an advertisement. As, as, as I was scrolling through these dealer documents, I have never seen oh. this tool before in any catalog. Oh, for pulling so, off keycaps. For pulling off keycaps. Oh, so if you okay. see one of these, that's what it's for. Oh. Wow. Uh, little educational bit right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. More tools that we need to recreate for ourselves. Uh, Pretty much, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I assume yeah. something uh, uh, 3D printed probably wouldn't be strong enough for that application. Uh, right. Powder aluminum 3D printed probably would be okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, plastic wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any okay. kind of SLA or anything like that. Yeah. Have any of you seen That's the latest video from Typewriter Justice this week? No. no. He did a restoration of, uh, of a typewriter. I don't remember if it was Olympia or whatever. But oh, yeah, I saw that. It's he redid the whole case as well. The SM4. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's a beautiful case that it like, just stripped all of the leatherette off of it sand it off all the glue and that and it just refinishes wood finish mm-hmm. uh, actually it really gave me an idea because i have a, an old case here for my uh, remington model 5 and i'm thinking i'll oh, just do that to it because it's, it's just all it, it ranks it's I gotta yeah do the whole thing. that sounds like a great yeah. idea john you should do underneath, it and give us updates uh, on it yeah <laughs> <laughs> underneath every one of those uh Covered cases is is beautiful wood paneling underneath, or not paneling, but uh, yeah. uh, huh. it's it's not like chipboard or anything like that. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's real shaved yeah. wood. Yeah. It's it's really beautiful when you shine them up. Would, would uh, that be the case with my uh, Olympia uh, S9? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Because that case is torn up. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So hmm. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. just like those World War II uh, speed graphic press cameras mm-hmm. that are covered in leather. If you take it off, it's teak wood underneath. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You, you really got to wonder what they were thinking. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be the best way to get the covering off? Um, heat. Like heat. A heat gun. Okay. Um, Paint scraper, maybe. Yeah, some kind of paint uh, okay. solvent. Because it'd just be on there with the adhesive, right? Yeah, it's just adhesive, some kind of yeah. glue, animal glue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a nice. Yeah. Avoid the warranty <laughs> Do right it. Now, so. It'll avoid the warranty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, on that, on that note, I think we're, we're ready to end. I want to thank right. everybody for being here. Uh, it was a fascinating us. discussion. I think next week we're probably going to do another Q and A. Okay. Um, and I do know on the it's still a, a couple weeks away, but on the fifteenth uh, we're skipping it because of uh, virtual Hermans because I I don't want to conflict with virtual Hermans. So right. uh, we'll be skipping that one and then returning the week after that. Right. So all right, Very cool. yeah. All so right, who well, is going to virtual hum- Hermans? I'm I'm hoping to. Yep. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. I want to see hands. 
Where are you? You I probably will be working. Is is. Maybe maybe Sunday, <laughs> but I'll be working Sunday. Okay. Uh, it's Friday and Saturday. I can't attend. Mm-hmm. But Well, yeah, I think on Saturday they're having a late night thing also, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Like a maybe late I night can, chat. Maybe yeah. I can get on there late. <laughs> That would be fun. It's going to be They'll going all a, weekend, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They have a late night chat for people in Asia and Australia. Very good, very good. And do we have to stay outside in our in our backyard <laughs> and camp in our backyards overnight? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just to make us feel like we're at Hermit's? <laughs> <laughs> Bring your own fire. <laughs> Bring your own fire, exactly. <laughs> Bill, it was uh, good seeing you on air. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Bill. I really appreciate it. And also, uh, Indra was here. Yes. I appreciated him being and everybody yep. else. Yep. All the John, familiar good faces. seeing you again. And Bernardo. Yeah. Chad, of yeah. course. Thank you. I think I'll we got a better you, Chad. bunch today. I'll, I'll, I'll get a letter to you. Yeah, we did. <laughs> no, we did 10. You. Yeah. I just you wanted to say. Growing and growing. I just <laughs> wanted to say, really enjoyed seeing Bill Staplers on Joe's video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, it was oh, yes. very interesting. Well, Bill has a big collection of staplers. He's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you have any uh, ace, ace liners? Oh, yes. Okay. Find them all because we're doing a survey. We, can, we found a date code on them. So uh, if you go to my blog right up here, uh, about a post back, there is a request for information on ace ace liners that you can uh, respond to and help us research that oh terrific so uh and you'll also learn how to do the date code find out when your staplers were made wow <laughs> oh i have just a bates stapler that i got a uh, bates yep yes the wire stapler with the brass wire and that was mm-hmm. of course bill got me interested in that so thank you bill <laughs> <laughs> the best staple Excellent. ever made. Yes. They make their <laughs> own staples. That's right. <laughs> best stapler ever made. And you know, um, um, it does, it, it will staple brass, thin brass. Uh, oh. Mm-hmm. That's how oh, I wow. made my, oops, no, that way. That's how I made the um, uh, shuttle shield for my handle. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. Very cool. So anyway, the um, uh, I'll have a few surprises for you all next weekend. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. We'll look nice. forward to it. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys. All right. Thank you so much, see everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you Bye. next time. Bye. Bye.